Robert Alvarez with Velas Commerce and also representing San Juan Pitev de Puerto Rico. Hola a todos. Tenemos una charla hoy acerca de Lightning para Negocios and our chat for today is going to be in a mix of English and Spanish. So I believe there's translation devices available for everybody if you don't already have them. And hopefully everybody entienda. And yeah, without more, I'm going to welcome our panel to the stage. And thank you, everybody. Hola, hola. Okay, thank you. First thing, I have a couple of questions for the audience. I guess, la primera pregunta, ¿cuántos de ustedes entienden inglés? <laughs> okay, okay, perfecto. Voy a hacer la, las preguntas en inglés, en inglés para que no tengan que escuchar mi español. <laughs> First of all, um, how many of you all have heard of the Bitcoin Lightning Network? Excelente, okay, okay. Okay, very good. So you all are going to get something out of this, I hope. And how many of you all have made a transaction using Lightning, made, made a payment with Lightning? Cool. Un poco menos, pero seguimos avanzando. Okay. How many of you all represent businesses that are interested in or have already implemented Lightning Network and Lightning Payments? Excellent. Okay. All right. We got some of you all too. Last question for today. Who thinks we're going to see more Lightning-powered applications, businesses, and software in the future? Excellent, okay. I think you all are definitely going to get a lot out of today. I have an excellent panel with us here today. We're going to be talking about Lightning for Business. We have Dulce with um, BACT and also with Libreria de Satoshi. We have Miles with Cash App, Alex with River Financial, and Leopoldo with uh, MicroStrategies. So I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves and then, and then we'll get into this, starting with um, Dulce, por favor. Hi everyone, I'm Dulce, born and raised in Mexico, but I love Argentina. Um, I am Director of Product Management for Lightning Network Products at BACT. It's a 360 crypto platform for all your problems. We give you solutions. And also I'm CEO of Libreria Satoshi. It's a Bitcoin and Lightning technical school for Spanish speaking. And I can be more happy than, than to be here with you all guys. Hello, it's great to be back in Argentina. My name is Miles Suter, and I lead all things Bitcoin at Cash App. Cash App is the easiest way to send, spend, and save money in the United States. Last quarter, we had 55 million monthly active users. In 2017, we were the first public company to support Bitcoin. And in 2021, we were the first public company to support the Lightning Network. So thank you for having me. I'm Alex Leishman. I'm the founder and CEO of River. We're a United States-based uh, Bitcoin brokerage, custodian, and financial services company. Um, we serve a, a growing number of clients. Uh, our number is a little smaller than, than Cash App, but we were the first Bitcoin exchange in the United States to support the Lightning Network. And we also have a... Um, a we're, we're pretty active in Lightning. Uh, we power a lot of uh, uh, exchanges and apps worldwide, including the Chivo app in El Salvador. Um, and we, we power their Lightning backend. So, um, yeah, that's what we do. Hi, I'm Leopoldo. Glad to be here. I am part of MicroStrategy. I am like the Bitcoin expert in Latin America. Um, and MicroStrategy is more a traditional software company that has recently started acquiring lots of Bitcoin. And now we are uh, introducing a new product to the ecosystem. Uh, our idea, our idea is mainly uh, a strategy for for treasury, but we now also want to to collaborate in the ecosystem by bringing some new products and hopefully onboarding some of our customers, which are more of the traditional uh, enterprises, into this space. Excellent. Thank you, Leopoldo. Thank you, everybody. So my first question for today is just open for all of your all's thoughts. And I'm very curious to hear, we've got some of the biggest um, names in Lightning and some of the biggest businesses currently using Lightning. What do you think have been the most recent, advan the most recent and important advances in Lightning for business? 
I can take this to start. Um, obviously, for a business, um, it makes a lot of sense to have consumers that are, are able to pay you if you're trying to get paid in Bitcoin and over Lightning. And while we have a huge base of customers at Cash App um, currently, the Bitcoin aspect of that is a smaller proportion of that. But we've been really pleased by the strategic decision we made to invest in Lightning. It wasn't going to be the thing that moved the needle the most for the overall business, but we see a future for Bitcoin and Lightning to make Bitcoin the native currency of the internet. It needs free and instant payments. Um, and it needs to be readily available in a super accessible way to a massive customer base. So we're really proud of doing that. Um, and we've been seeing great adoption as a result. And so I think focusing on making it as simple as possible, point and shoot and getting in the hands of as many people as possible, um, that's going to be how we get a virtuous cycle going and how we continue to grow this thing around the world. Excellent. Thank you. Alex. Um, and yeah, and, and I can chime in. I think another big aspect of uh, seeing light, Lightning adoption uh, for businesses is making it very easy for businesses to build on Lightning. Historically, um, it required building a lot of infrastructure yourself if you wanted to build any sort of application that was Lightning powered. And over the last few years, we've seen um, a proliferation of companies, including our own at River, making it very, very easy for businesses to just plug into the Lightning network via a simple API. And um, these these infrastructure tools have now matured and have made Lightning extremely easy and reliable for businesses to build on. And so um, I think that's starting to unlock uh, another, another order of magnitude in terms of um, adoption. And I can vouch for that, for Rivers, uh, how good River is. Yeah, and I would like to add also, like there is so much blockchain technology in the world, right? And this is all my views, right? Uh, but why building in lining and non-smart contracts is like Bitcoin people think is boring, but actually is safe, secure, and lining bring this scalability where we entrepreneurs can make business in a safe, secure way. Like if you want to do something crazy that is unsafe, you cannot do it in Bitcoin, basically. Then I think lining is, is the next generation or give us the opportunity to have the next generation of entrepreneurs from Latin America, like we can see all the people from, from the US. But my, invitation, my invite is like you Latinos come to do business with us because it's a good technology. It's the technology of the future. It's secure, it's safe. You find Bitcoin in every single corner, even in Arbolitos in Argentina, right? Excellent. Hey, um, Leopoldo, I think this brings an excellent question that I wanted to direct to you specifically. Um, Given what Dulce said, do you see the business case of Bitcoin in the Lightning Network strictly for payments or also for other things? No. In fact, um, our use case of the Lightning Network, uh, it's a little different than uh, making payments because uh, what we've done is a rewards platform in which um, we have this uh, like loyalty programs for companies. Um, and this is... In the end, there are payments, of course, because people will uh, get their funds. But <clears throat> the way we use the Lightning Network is to incentivize uh, customers or employees inside a company to participate in that company. So it's, it's like uh, a traditional loyalty program with points, but instead of points, we give Satoshis. So those, that also makes this interoperable because most uh, loyalty programs are inside that company. You have the points, and you can only exchange those inside some products from that company. <clears throat> when we implement Lightning, we have this interoperability in which you can uh, withdraw your, your Satoshis, and then you can spend them anywhere. You can get a gift card, uh, but you can also get it uh, something at the store. Like You have many more uh, opportunities to spend that price that you are getting. Yeah, I think that's an excellent point. Lightning's interoperability when it comes to user rewards is something that I think is just beginning to be explored and super cool to hear you say that too. All right, Dulce, the ne this next question is directed at you. Um, what do you see as the Lightning Network's role in global payments and especially in cross-border remittances or remesas? Yeah, I'm going to answer this in Spanish. Voy a contar una historia personal y por qué las remesas son 
el caso perfecto, el caso de uso perfecto para Lightning Network. Cuando tú eres un inmigrante como yo en los Estados Unidos y no tienes un credit score, no, tienes, eh, no, está, no existías en el sistema financiero americano, cuando yo quiero hacer remesas, tarda cinco o seis días. Pero no es que tarde cinco o seis días. Mis fondos eh, están casi congelados hasta que ver, verifiquen, eh, hagan el KYC, ¿cierto? ¿Y cómo son las remesas en el mundo? Son muy caras. Son del 8%, del, del, del 8 hasta el 14%. Las fees son muy altas. Y son, es un servicio caro y malo tradicionalmente. Pero con Lightning Network es, es fast, es Lightning Fast. Eh, para darles una idea, en el mundo de las remesas tienes que tener pool de liquidez en los dos países. Pero con Lightning eso no es necesario porque una transacción de Lightning se hace en tres milisegundos. Y bueno, todos aquí sabemos que Bitcoin es beautiful money. Y Lightning es beautiful but fast. ¿Cierto? Entonces, para las remesas es el caso perfecto porque Bitcoin es un dinero neutral, está en todo el mundo y simplemente todo el mundo lo acepta en el mundo y hay además una regulación en casi todos los países para Bitcoin. Entonces, por eso es la razón que en, en mi empresa, en BAC, decidimos empezar con un producto de cross-border payments o remesas de Estados Unidos hacia Latinoamérica y los queremos invitar a que si quieren participar, me busquen después de la sesión también. Y el mercado gigante también, ¿no? Y es un mercado gigante y muy humano. Los humanos lo necesitamos. Es, es un caso de uso que no es para trading, es un caso de uso eh, para la humanidad. Qué okay, cool. Ok, thank you, Dulce. Um, next question is for Miles. Um, what do you see are the roles of Lightning service providers? And do you believe that they will lead to excessive centralization in the Lightning Network in the future? I, I want to add on quickly to Dolce's point quickly, though, um, about how Bitcoin is an emerging monetary language, at least as far as I can see, and how it really helps to connect disparate financial systems that for just this, some odd reasons or capital controls or whatever, they cannot communicate to each other. You can't move money from this country to this co country simply and easily and for low cost. And I've been obsessed with Bitcoin accelerating adoption around the world wherever I can for some time. I was at the protests in Hong Kong. Um, I, I moved down to Bitcoin Beach in 2020 very early on as I was getting going. And I've recently been seeing so many use cases where I can be in Kenya like I was last December and I could go to a merchant that only accepts M-Pesa. Uh, my money and my bank account can't speak M-Pesa, but through a partnership, through a lightning-enabled company in Africa called Bitnob, I can transfer value to them over lightning and they can pay out that local merchant in M-Pesa. And we're seeing regulated companies in different jurisdictions all around the world. And because they can all speak lightning, this common monetary language, all of a sudden the Bitcoin is only up there for a moment um, and you can go fiat to fiat but use it as a more effective faster cheaper more accessible swift system so i'm really excited to see that keep going to your original question lsps are essential if we're going to keep the ethos of bitcoin right now a lot of lightning usage is custodial right now cash app is a custodial solution meaning we hold the keys and it just makes things a lot simpler for retail customers or people who are on their Bitcoin journey. And we do our best to teach them along the way and make it as accessible as possible to as many people as possible because that's how we'll continue to get more adoption around the world. But ultimately, since day one, we've encouraged customers to control their own private keys, withdraw on chain, take custody. However, lightning is really hard in a non-custodial manner. And so while we need to be conscious of the centralization risk and some of these hubs and spokes popping up around the network topology of the Lightning uh, network graph. In my view, LSPs are essential because I remember the first time I downloaded a non-custodial Lightning wallet and I, I, like it blew my mind. I could not, it's like, what do you mean I can't receive funds here? Um, what do you mean I got to manage all these channels? And so LSPs are playing a really important role of Make, uh, abstracting away that experience for everyday users so that you can control your own keys, you can use the Lightning Network, and it just works. Um, one quick last plug, I don't think any company in the world is doing more for Bitcoin than Block Inc, which Cash is a part of, and we have, um, we have an LSP project there called C Equals 
that you can check out uh, if you're looking for liquidity man tools or management or whatever. So thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, Miles. Okay, Alex, this next question is for you. So River Financial is, I think, it would not be an exaggeration to say that you all are a giant in the Lightning world. And who's doing that? Oh, yeah. Perdón. So Alex, this question is for you. What, is the, what are some of the biggest misconceptions you see around Lightning for business today? Um, I, I think a lot of people uh, come to, a lot of businesses come to Lightning from different angles um, with different levels of understanding. Um, one of the common uh, misconceptions I see is people not understanding what layer of abstraction that they need to operate at as a business. Um, I think a lot of businesses assume that um, if they want us to get started with Lightning, they have to do everything themselves the hard way. Um, so, you know, commonly when we get, um, when we onboard a new client using our Lightning API, they ask questions like, well, where's my Lightning channel or where's my node? And we're actually, you know, providing a layer on top of all of that and making it super easy. And so, um, you know, I think one of the, um, so I, I think that that's like one common sort of point of confusion and misconception around businesses. They don't really know sort of how to reason about it yet in terms of how much work it's going to be to build on it. Um, I think another is that they don't always understand the complexity involved uh, if they do want to do certain things with Lightning, uh, and especially as Miles said, in, in this, if they want to build some sort of like consumer self-custody type of app, um, I think they often think that that's just as simple as building something custodial, and in practice, it's actually um, much more difficult uh, and much more difficult than even building a self-custody on-chain product. So that's another sort of big point of, of confusion for, for new builders to the space. And so um, we definitely spent a lot of time educating and, and talking people through that. Great, thank, great answer, thank, Alex, thank you. Yeah, I think that sort of points to all of our jobs here. And for all of you who answered the question that yes, you know about the Lightning Network, and have made lightning payments before. We have to educate, especially businesses, just like individuals, about what lightning for business is and what different levels there are and how complicated it is or isn't. So this is an open question to you all as a group. Um, what do you all see as the biggest hurdles preventing growth in the lightning network for business right now? Be they technical, social, regulatory, what a just open question. And I, I want to start answering that question because we face it ourselves. Um, First, I, I want to, to make a small, a small context. Uh, from what I've seen, I've seen the Lightning Network evolve from when it was just an idea, and I never dreamt of being here. Like, Bitcoin for business is, is like crazy. But I've seen that there was the first uh, step of doing the, the back end, the technical stuff. Then we had this problem with the UX, that this, nobody's going to use this, this is too complicated. And now I see that both of that uh, are still in development, but are pretty well made at, at this point. Like users can interact with the Lightning Network. And so what we are facing, uh, particularly MicroStrategy, is uh, a regulatory uh, uncertainty. Um, our product, for example, was uh, we were able to have this enabled in the US. So um, my fellow employees on the company can withdraw their sets only if they are based in the US. So there's uh, like um, kind of a paradox that the, the system is worldwide, uh, technically you can move money around the world, but jurisdictions uh, are very local and they have different rules and you don't always get to uh, do that. You can technically do it, but being a corporation, you need to comply with, with the legal regulations of the place you're operating in. And so we are facing that, that issue right now and it's really, uh, we see the, that as the main obstacle because the platform is pretty easy to use and we know that the technical background is there, but we need to do that legal uh, work uh, additionally to be able to use it properly. So Dulce, I think you had something. Yeah, um, it, one of the challenge and also min misunderstanding of Lightning Network and I'm gonna to add to the table like a stable coins. Like in Latin America, a lot of the people and business use the stable coins because they feel, uh, oh, there is no volatility, uh, it's safer. But is, is are really safe? Like if they are not backed on anything, like uh, 
it's kind of, again, going to the back circle of using money that is not backed by nothing and the people and companies can disappear. Why Lightning Network is just Bitcoin. Lightning is Bitcoin. That's it. And if we go, understand the technicalities of Lightning, we can see we don't need to use a stable coins. Uh, instead, we can use Lightning because if we do, if we do, cre if we create beautiful technology as fast as Lightning, uh, we can decrease the volatility of the Bitcoin price and. Like if you think if I open a channel with Miles via Cash App back to open a channel, like how fast is going to be? We can do business so fast that we don't need a stable, co stable coins that can disappear. Also, stable coins are not stable, right? Uh, like this is the truth. And we can also keep working in a monetary system, US based. Is what we want? Then I would say like there is a lot of opportunities using Lightning Network. That's a good point about stable coins not being entirely stable, and I think most of the audience here in Argentina would have personal experience with the fact that the uh, fiat currency of the country doesn't always hold its value the way we would hope it would. Um, Alex and Miles, My I think this question is mainly directed at you all, um, as you've been such long-term players in Lightning. Um, I'd like to know where you all see Lightning for business in the next five or ten years, and of course, Leopoldo y Dulce. I would say it's But uh, okay, Alex, maybe you go first. <clears throat> sure, I can start. Um, I think the first wave of adoption that takes Lightning, the Lightning Network to its next order of magnitude in terms of transaction volumes and, um, and, and transaction numbers uh, is going to be the trend we're currently seeing of exchanges, brokerages, and financial services companies uh, that are custodial implementing Lightning Network onto their existing applications. So basically, any app that already has Bitcoin user balances um, and the ability to send and receive Bitcoin on-chain, that's, that's like the lowest hanging fruit for Lightning adoption, is all of those apps plugging into the Lightning network. So I think that's, that's like the, the, ne the phase we're currently in. Um, and one exciting thing about that phase is that we're seeing people realizing that this is creating a globally connected um, network of fiat to Bitcoin on and off ramps uh, that can now instantly transact between each other. And so we're seeing people trying to lean into that. LightSpark has a cool uh, protocol out, the, the universal money address that uses LN URLs to try and make it um, build an, an, an open protocol for seamlessly transacting um, uh, fiat to fiat between different countries with the Bitcoin Lightning Network as the rail, as, as Dolce, Dolce was mentioning. Um, and then I think the, the, the next phase of, of Bitcoin's adoption is going to, or, or of the Lightning Network adoption is going to be dependent on how effective Bitcoin becomes as a medium of exchange uh, or a, a, a tool for transacting and commerce, whether that's, um, whether that's in, in new niches or unlocking um, commerce that couldn't exist before or taking over existing commerce. And I think that would be the next phase after the current phase. Um, and that's something I'm excited to see hopefully play out. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, uh, this is a great answer by Alex. Uh, I'll just add a couple quick things. In talking to my friends at some of the local companies here, Bello, Lemon, Mercado Pago, uh, no LN yet for those, but it's really impressive that those first two have already adopted Lightning. And I think Lightning can be a great equalizer for people around the world, especially in the global south, as we need Bitcoin fees to, to rise in the long term, and therefore we need a solution like Lightning that is more economical and can support more people and be much more universally accessible to everyone. So it's encouraging to see across my platform, across platforms down here in Argentina, um, that that adoption continues to grow and doesn't price people out. In terms of one of the first questions when I joined Square in 2017, which is a merchant um, point of sale business in the United States, um, my Bitcoin friends have been asking me when Lightning on there forever. Um, and I think we, it, it, it's important sometimes to zoom out and realize that this is a really long battle that we're fighting. It's, it, it, it's not going to, I have to remind myself all the time too, but we're not just going to snap our fingers and have a new global monetary system. Uh, and we need to pick our moments really, um, really wisely, I'd say. 
And so in the US, I, I, we have monetary privilege there quite a bit, where the credit card system works great. Um, there's less of a use case for Bitcoin as a medium of exchange. But just to tell a quick anecdote from my personal experience in El Salvador, there was a hotel I stayed at for a long time, became friends with the owner, and uh, he was an expat, and he would use a square point of sale, and he would type up the order, he would keep his inventory, he would print out the bill um, using the free square software that we make available to 140 countries around the world. And then when it came time to pay the bill, I had a credit card because I have this monetary privilege and just expect to get my points and all that stuff. Um, and before I really knew my friend Bo, uh, it, it, I didn't think so much about the margins, but he would have to pull out this local credit card processor and get charged 8%, and now he's losing money on that bill from me because I ate all of his margin by paying with the credit card. And so I think in emerging markets where there is less privilege, where a free and instant payment system like Lightning, um, as well as like a, 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 an audience or um, population that is more deeped in the ethos and driving global adoption. Uh, I do see a future there. And so uh, I'm excited to, to keep following this thread and also keep my che myself in check on uh, what, what the relative timelines and all these things are going to be. Okay, thank you so much. I think, um, Dulce, you already hinted at this and Leopoldo being Argentino, uh, I think this question is especially directed at, at you two, but I would like to know what advantage you all see of the Bitcoin and Lightning Network over a stable coin, for example, like are there are advantages are there advantages to using the Lightning Network natively with Bitcoin versus using stable coins? I, I think you already answered that. Uh, I will give Leopold the opportunity to to answer. Like, is the difference between the benefits of using no, yeah. Lightning versus a stable coins? I think um, we want. Um, I'm not really sure. Um, if we, we are using, like, we are a traditional company, we still use dollars mainly. Uh, we think that maybe the best solution to, to go into <clears throat> in between those, uh, I look forward to, but I, I'm saying this by myself, not, not as part of MicroStrategy, that taproot assets will be a, greatly, a great improvement in that because you can have both of best worlds. Um, you can have both the, the stability and also the long-term uh, holding of um, Bitcoin value. Um, I think there's also um, this idea that when you have customers that are very used to, to using a, a, stable, a stable currency like the dollar, you can just show the, the balance in dollars and use Lightning as a background, as the, the back end to make the payments, but settle everything in their own currency. Anyway. So they don't need to be dealing with exchange rates. Excellent. Thank you. I want to add something. Yeah, like, go ahead. Lightning then... was to be experimental, but it was too good that a lot of business like Bag, River, Cash App, MicroStrategy, we are doing business, right? But it's still an experimental that we need a lot of developers to join the force in open source and keep moving. And Lightning, how we see today the Lightning Network, is not going to be the same Lightning Network in 10 years. The LSPs probably are not going to be centralized, are going to be uh, using a system or mixed self-custody. Uh, the Lightning we know today is not going to be the Lightning Network we are going to see in 15 years. And as a user, you have the power to tell all these companies what you need. And that, I think, is beautiful. And about taproot assets, uh, we have to always understand what are the single point of failures of each technology. Lightning has point of failure. Tab, taproot assets has point of failure. And, we, and of course, uh, shit comes even more. But we need to understand and learn more about Lightning and create products and business. And please uh, talk to us after this talk, uh, because we, we love to, to talk with you and make business with you. That's All right, it. I think that's a great uh, summary. So thank you, Dulce. Thank you, Alex, Miles, and Leopoldo. And thank you all for, um, for attending. Thank you. Thank you very much.